Today let's talk about basic motion and responding to keyboard and mouse events. I'm starting with a basic program that just displays an ellipse centered in the middle of the screen whose size is 100. Like this. Okay, so if you want anything to change here, what you have to do is change the numbers that you're using to tell the computer where you want to draw the ellipse. So let's say we wanted to change the ellipse's vertical position. In that case, we would want to change the Y coordinate. If I change this to 10, for example, now the ellipse is displaying in a very different location. So what we want to do is we want this number to change over time. Remember that the draw loop is looping about 30 times a second. So what we want is every single time the draw loop runs, we want this number to change a little bit. And all of those incremental changes will add up to produce something that looks like an animation. So nothing changes if it's not a variable. So let's make this into a variable called y. You'll want to declare all of your variables here at the very top of the program. So I'm going to make mine a float y. Float is like a double. It's a number that can have a decimal. And then I'm going to give it its initial value here. So I want y to start out at 300. OK, I run it. And it's not moving yet, because even though I made a variable, I haven't actually told that variable to change. So here inside draw, let's say y equals y plus 1. And now when I run it, you see that it's very slowly moving down. But it's also leaving a trail behind it, which is all of the old drawings that it's already made. This will be a little bit more obvious if we make it skip by more than one. Like, what if we make it skip by 15? So now you can see the ball's moving a lot faster, and you can see there's 15 pixels between each of these drawings. There's a command that you can use which will repaint the background every time. That command is background. So I'm going to repaint the background white every single frame. Usually you'd have background be at the very top, so that, that way you paint the entire frame white, then you can draw whatever it is you want to draw, and then the next time through the loop, you repaint it white, and you draw the ellipse in the new spot. Cool. Let's make it move slowly again so that we can see it. There we go. So now we've got some basic motion happening. If you wanted to change other things about the ellipse, for example, let's say you wanted it to grow larger or smaller over time. In that case, you would need these numbers to change. So you would need to create variables for these numbers, which you would declare up here, give initial values and setup, and then you could change one step at a time here inside draw. Let's talk about the mouse real quick. So let's first display some text. Here I'm going to say, text size is 64, and I'm going to say text alignment is centered. And then here I'm going to display text high at, let's display it at, I don't know, 300 and 100. So sort of near the top of the screen. I'm also going to fill the text black. Let's just make sure that works. Great, there's high. Hi. So there's two built-in variables that you should know about. The first is called mouse x. So let's display the value of mouse x. Mouse x is spelled this way with a lowercase m and a capital X. And this variable is updated all the time with the current x coordinate of the mouse. So I'm going to display that using text. And I'm also going to display the mouse's y coordinate right underneath. So here's mouse x, here's mouse y. And then if I wanted to display underneath, maybe I'll make that 200. OK, cool. So now as we move around, you'll see these numbers are changing. And when the mouse is in the center of the screen, it's about 300, 300. This is about 0, 0. This is about 600, 600. The reason I did that is because I want to show you that you can use these variables to do other things. For example, right now my ellipse, the y coordinate is just adding 1 every time. But instead, I could do this. I could say, Let's draw the ellipse not at the y coordinate. Let's draw the ellipse at wherever the mouse y is. So now the ellipse is always going to draw at an x coordinate of 300, but the y coordinate is going to be the same as the mouse. And if you run it, you see the ellipse is kind of following my mouse as I move up and down. If you wanted to reverse it, you could have the y coordinate be the moving one, and the x coordinate would be the mouse's x. So now when I run it, you'll see that it's moving down slowly, but it's also following the x coordinate of my mouse. I guess let's, heck, let's use them both together. 
So if we have the ellipse draw itself at mouse x, mouse y, now both coordinates will be where my mouse r is. Sorry, I know how to grammar. Okay, so let's go back and draw the ellipse at 300 and our y coordinate y. So mouse x, mouse y is a good way of keeping track of where the mouse is. Let's talk about mouse clicks. Um, there's a couple of different ways to detect mouse clicks. Right now I'm going to show you how to detect whether or not the button is being pressed down. It's a Boolean variable called mouse pressed. So I can say if mouse pressed equals true, then I'm going to do something. So if the mouse pressed is true, let's, let's just draw something random. Let's draw a rectangle at 10, 10, 100, 100. Okay, so now when I run it, no rectangle, but then when I click the mouse, every time I hold it down, it draws a rectangle there. So think for a minute about how we would make a program that has the ellipse move only when we're pressing the button down, but when we're not pressing the button down, it just displays stationary wherever it happens to be. I think a lot of beginners might do this. They might take this and they might say, if the mouse is being pressed, then let's draw the ellipse right there. The problem with this is, this is only going to actually draw the ellipse when the mouse is being pressed. Because if the mouse isn't being pressed, this if statement is false, and so it won't even run this drawing command. So here. Now it will display and move while I'm pressing the mouse down, but it doesn't display when the mouse isn't being pressed down. So instead, the idea is, let's draw it all the time. So remember, draw is running all the time. So we always want to be drawing it. It's only that when the mouse is pressed, that's when we want to actually change the number that's inside here, which controls where it's being drawn. So now it's all the time, but whenever I click, it moves, and when I let go, it stops. Okay, last but not least, let's look at the keyboard really quickly. So I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to delete all the rest of this mouse-related stuff and the text-related stuff. All right, so there's a similar... So if we wanted to know if the mouse button was being pressed, we would say if mouse pressed. There's a similar variable for a key being pressed down, and it's called key pressed. So this will be true only when a key on the keyboard is being pressed down. Well, the next natural question is what key is it? So there's another variable that stores what is the most recent key that's been pressed, and that variable is called key. So I can say if key equals, let's say, A. The A has to be in single quotes. Um, and then I can put in a test for another key. If the key, excuse me, equals D, then we'll do something else. So let's display some random things. So if I press the A key, let's display an ellipse that is located at uh, 100, 300, and it's 100 by 100. And if the B key, Sorry, if the D key is being pressed, let's display in another, another ellipse, only it's going to display at uh, 500. No. Yes. So now when I run it, if I press A, there's an ellipse, and if I press D, there's a different ellipse. And if I press them both down, you'll notice that it doesn't work if I try and hold them down simultaneously. The reason why is because that variable key only remembers what was the most recent button that was pressed down. So we can't do both together. There is a way of having it detect both keys at once. Um, it's a little bit more complicated and we'll deal with that much later. So last but not least, let's change this so that the A and D keys actually move the ellipse left and right. So if I wanted to move left and right, I need to draw this ellipse in different x-coordinates. So instead of displaying at 300, I need this to be a variable so that the number inside here can change. So let me add a variable up here, and I want x to start at 300. 
And now, when I hit the A key, instead of drawing a different ellipse, what I want to do is I want to change the number that's inside here, which is where I'm drawing this ellipse at. So only when I'm pressing A do I want the X value to get smaller, for example. So here I might say A, whoops, excuse me, X equals X minus, let's do minus three. And then when I'm pressing the D key, I might say X equals X plus three. So now when I run it, if I'm holding D, it moves right. If I'm holding A, it moves left. Next time we'll look at how we can deal with the edges of the screen. So we could either make the object stop when it reaches the edge of the screen, or we could make it wrap around to the other side, or if it's moving by itself without being controlled by the mouse or the keyboard, we could have it bounce off the edge of the screen.